What's up, boxing fans? This is TBE Boxing. Back at you again. Today's topic, total destruction. Terence Crawford breaks Errol Spence to become two times undisputed champion. Let's chop it up and see what it's all about. Okay, boxing fans. Yeah, we're gonna chop it up. We're gonna talk some boxing today. Uh, this is the night, uh, the day, uh, evening after the big uh, showdown between uh, Iceman Bud Crawford and uh, Errol the True Spence, and you know uh, the results are in. Okay, but before we get into the fight, uh, as usual, uh, we're gonna go to the video tape and you know go go you know we we're gonna look at a little history. Let's take a look at this. Over the weekend, we saw uh, Terence Crawford uh, knock out uh, Kel Brook in, in four rounds in a uh, phenomenal uh, way. Did you see the fight, and what did you make of how uh, Terence looked in there? I watched the fight. I mean, I had no comments on it. I don't know how it – I mean, I don't know how to take it. I mean, you know, I mean – did he? Kel did Brook you think he not, looked well? Like you know, I, I know Errol, it, you went with Errol to fight uh, Kel Brook. You know, like how, how did you feel Kel looked in there, and how did you feel that Terrence looked in there? I think Kel Brook looked pretty decent. I mean, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I think that what I think is that everybody looks good hitting the heavy bag, hitting the mitts. You know what I mean? And I think that that's kind of when he was landing those shots, it was like hitting the mitts. But it's like when you get hit back, that kind of tells where you are, right? Not so much about because I mean everybody looks great hitting the bag, hitting the mitts, and that's what I, that's what I think about it. I mean, you know, who was hitting the mitts? Was, you know, who was hitting the mitts? Was it uh, Terrence? Kel was. Kel. Okay. Okay. Kel was the one landing all the shots, uh -huh. most of the shots, you know. And then I said, like I said, everybody looks good to hitting the mitts, or it's about when you get hit back. Mm. That's that was that was when you couldn't, you know. So that lets you know it was kind of shot. And I mean, even going into the fight, they had to know that. They had to know it was shot or whatever, but you know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, there it is. So this is Derek James, the uh, trainer of the year, uh, you know, uh, talking about the fight between Kell Brook and Errol Spence. I mean, sorry, Kell Brook and Terrence Crawford. You know, at first he said Kell Brook was doing doing good. That's what he said in the beginning when he was asked. He said, "Oh, Kell Brook, he did. You know, he was the one landing all the punches." But then after that, he said that uh, Kell Brook was shot because he, when, because of what Terrence Crawford did to him. You know, when Crawford hit him, he you know he he, he got discombobulated. So he's saying now. So you know, Jake Jane just talks out of both sides of his mouth. Okay, he say one thing and then two seconds later he contradict what he's saying, and you know, and at the same time trying to sound like he's he's passing on wisdom or something. You, you know what I mean? This guy is something else. So at the end of the day, you know, this is what he said about the fight. With you know, he said because again, you know, this is what you call disrespecting Terence Crawford's power because he's saying that it's not that Terence Crawford had power why uh, Book went down it's because Book was shot according to Derek James, okay? So instead of giving Crawford credit for his power or, or, or accepting the fact that Crawford is a, is a, is a, is a, has great power in his punching, he said something like, oh, well, uh, you know, uh, Book was shot, even though a few sentences before he said Book was doing good. But, he, you know, but for the sake of his point, for him making this point, Book is shot, okay? You see what I'm saying? So this is how Derek James approaches, you know, everything when he when he's talking about Terence Crawford, and this is what happens every time someone asks him a question about Terence Crawford, he just starts capping and starts talking nonsense. Okay, so here, you know, we saw what he said about uh, uh, Terence Crawford and uh, about what he did to Kell Book. Book was shot according to because, you know, it's all about what happened when you get when you got when you get hit back. Not when you land the punches, and we all saw that he he's right about that because we all saw that with the Errol Spence and, and Terence Crawford fight last night. But let's continue a little more on Derrick James. 
did you by chance listen to the comments that uh, Bob said after the fight uh, about uh, making a potential fight uh, with Errol and, and Terrence? Oh uh, yeah, I, I've heard of. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't watch a lot of media. I don't watch, yeah. but I, people send me stuff. So yeah. yeah, Aaron, Aaron, you know, uh, commented. Okay, that's another thing that Derek James does. He never watches a lot of media. Like when they ask him about watching Terrence Crawford fight, oh, I, I don't watch Terrence Crawford fight. I don't watch a lot of media. I don't watch boxing like that. Uh, but you know, when the fight comes, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch him when the fight is close. I'll watch him. But right now, I, I don't watch Terrence Crawford. I don't watch a lot of media. You know. He's not saying that here, but he said that before on previous occasions that he don't watch Terrence Crawford fights. Now, to me, uh, if I, if you're a trainer and you know these are fights supposed to be coming up eventually, and your trainer is not watching the other the opponent, then that's a dereliction of duty. I mean, you're not doing your due diligence. You're supposed to be watching every Terrence Crawford fight. So, based on what we saw last night, uh, you know, with Terence Crawford and, and Errol Spence. I guess Derek James really wasn't watching any Terence Crawford fights because if he was, he would have came with a better strategy than he did last night. Because the strategy that he had last night to fight Terence Crawford was was a non-starter. There was no strategy, basically. It seems like uh, this guy just didn't, you know, properly respect the, the the skills and the abilities of Terence Crawford. You know, we see that by the way he talks about Terence Crawford. But now, with the result of the fight between Terence Crawford and Errol Spence, you know, the guy he's supposed to be coaching, we, we, now we, uh, you know, we see that he really probably wasn't watching any fights by Terence Crawford. But let's continue with this video. I want to hear a little bit more about, and then we're going to continue with, you know, about, we're going to talk about the fight uh, last night. Let's continue. That if, you, you know, the PBC and you guys or Danny, whoever wins, really wants to make a big pay-per-view fight a real big pay-per-view fight they have to come in and fight terrence and that um arrow has been avoiding a fight with terrence he doesn't want to fight him because what we saw with kel would happen with arrow and bob said you know it would happen in in, in around the same time uh, i'm talking about i don't even know i mean i don't i mean well uh this makes Bob uh, Iron out to be a prophet because that's exactly what happened. But let's continue. I have no idea what he's talking about because I, I guess I didn't say that. But I mean, man, listen, you know, like, I think they just want, I mean, they want something. We have somebody, we have Danny Garcia in front of us, who, as I stated before, even if you add Kill Book on his resume, it still doesn't add up to what Danny Garcia has done. Okay. This is a you know this is a very important point right here. So what uh, Derek James is saying here that even if Kell Book, even after defeating Kell Book, okay, because remember he was one of the main guys that called for that Kell Book fight. Just in case you guys didn't know it, if you want to see the proof of that, watch my previous video, the Fear of the Walking Bud that came out just before this video, where he talks about the Kell Book fight before it actually happens, and he actually called for that fight. But uh, you know, here he's saying that. Even with Kell Book on his record, Crawford uh, resume doesn't add up to Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia, you know, I mean, think about that for a second. <laughs> Danny Gar, I mean, Danny Garcia was a great 100 and 140 pounder, and and he, but he wasn't as good as 147. He lost all his major fights at 147. But you know, uh, to say that. Danny Garcia's record is better than Terence Crawford when Terence Crawford was undisputed at 140 pounds. I mean, it, it, I mean, what? How does that make any sense? But that Derek James, you know, when it comes to Crawford, all he can do is cap. But let's continue. So what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying like, he, if you think about this, Danny Garcia has the deepest resume other than Manny Pacquiao. This is in boxing, period. And as a champion, I'll say on the pound for pound list, he has the weakest resume in boxing. Terrence, do you feel? Yes. I feel like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to get into weak fault because we don't, we don't even know that. But it's just two different it's apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. One guy has, he proved himself. One guy has been, you know, they, they tell you who he is. They tell you his opponents were because you didn't know who what's the guy named um, the Russian kid. The, the the guy that he fought before? 
the Russian kid. That, uh, what's that fought name? Terrence uh, before a mean machine? Yeah, yeah. No, not that guy, but the other one, the first one. The one the title one. Oh, uh, Postol. Yeah. We didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. They told us who he was. And we fought the other guy after that to, to unify. We didn't know who that guy was. Jeff Horn. No, not Horn. Mm -hmm. The other guy. The African guy. Oh, uh, it, it Dongo. Yeah, we had no idea who he was. Mm -hmm. We still don't know who he was. Okay, so here we go. So he's talking about Victor Postal, the guy that actually went the distance with Terence Crawford and put up a pretty good fight against Terence Crawford in that fight, even though Terence Crawford won. But we can all agree now that everybody that they mentioned, uh, Andango, uh, Jeff Horn, okay, and Victor Postal, they all did better than Errol Spence against Crawford. Okay, you see, so you see the hype and the and the, and, and and how it all works because all this talk about you know uh, the great fighters that uh, that Errol Spence was fighting, you know, he fought the better competition. Okay, he he fight, he, fight, he supposedly fought the better competition. Okay, and that Crawford was the people that Crawford fought was nobodies. Okay, that according to. Uh, uh, not just Derek James, but the fan base of Errol Spence as well. You know, they, these guys, you know, we, we, he, he's fighting, you know, they don't, you know, they don't even call the people by their right name. They call Avenesian, Avishnesian, and they, they make up funny names about Crawford uh, opponents and try to, you know, devalue his opponents and, uh, you know, uh, belittle Terrence Crawford's opponent. He ain't fought nobody. But all of the people that Terrence Crawford fought, uh, they did better than Errol Spence did against Terence Crawford. So what's this about the competition? You, so so it looked like Terence Crawford's competition <laughs> was a lot better than Errol Spence. The very people that Derek James is talking about, the people that he said, you know, nobody don't know them. Just because people don't know them doesn't mean that they can't fight. And we can see now, it's been proven, that Derek James don't know what the hell he's talking about. Okay? He's just capping. Okay? That's all he ever did was just cap. Okay, and you know everything is is coming out in the wash now. We are seeing what's going on, but you know we're not gonna stop there. Let's continue. Let's let's jump forward a little bit and let's go. Let's let's hear more of the wisdom of Derek James. Derek, who's the who's the better puncher when when, we, when it goes down? Crawford got ten knockouts in a row, but Spence looks like the heavy-handed natural. Ten brother. knockouts in a row against who? Some, some solid guys along the way, Sean Porter. To be fair, oh Sean man, Porter. Sean Porter's daddy said I was going to stop the fight before the fight. Mm. Didn't he say that? Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? I think he, he... No, no, no. What that meant was he was showing Sean he's still the boss. It was a power struggle going on in the ring. And what did Sean do when his dad did stop the fight? What did he do? When, he retired and didn't tell him. Ask him when the last time he talked to his dad. The night they was in the corner. He had not spoke to him anymore. So there, so there was a power struggle going on. More capping from Derek James. Okay, more capping. So there he is saying uh, ten knockouts against who? I mean, you you got a guy that comes up to the welterweight division and knocks out everyone that he fights. You know, I mean, you know, contenders, you know, champions, uh, uh, ex champions. He knocked out the champion when he came to the welterweight division, Jeff Horn. So. But, you know, Derek James gave Crawford Kork no credit for any of that. You know, he, he called, you know, basically saying that these guys were nobodies, that he didn't knock anybody out. You know, uh, I mean, this guy, the, the, the level of hubris and the level of, you know, just total disrespect, uh, you know, that uh, Derek James showed Crawford. Uh, this fight between Errol Spence and Crawford could only have ended the way it did. Okay. It was just total validation. And vindication of Terence Crawford, and he just made that Derek James. He just made everything that Derek James said and did irrelevant. Okay, he made Derek James it totally irrelevant. The fight that we saw last night, it was a total destruction of uh, Errol Spence by Terence Crawford. And you know, a lot of people, you know, even though you have people out there now talking about in hindsight, talking about, oh, we didn't expect anything like this. We didn't know, no, there's no way we could have foreseen this. There's no way anybody thought, you know, that's not, that's all nonsense. 
people been saying that for years that this was going to happen. Not just me, but a lot of other people have been saying this, okay? And they've been predicting it and saying it out loud. So people know that, you know, but they don't want to, you know, people, you know, they don't want to, you know, face the facts. And, you know, so now they are, you know, you know, feigning like, oh, oh, yeah, it's a big surprise and this, that, and the other. So a lot of guys, you know, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you know, uh, I have to face reality today after what we saw. You know, people like uh, uh, Boxing Eagle, I mean Boxing Eagle, <laughs> you know, people like him, you know, he's been on a uh, Terrence Crawford hate parade now for years, you know, this is Terrence Crawford, you know, talking all kind of nonsense, like he know what he's talking about boxing. This guy doesn't know anything about boxing, and we all saw that, and now, you know, uh, they all over there, you know, uh, all of these guys, you know, over there now, you know, trying to spin. Oh, yeah, well, I didn't say Terrence Crawford was no good. I always knew that he was a good fighter, but <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's great to watch this, what's going on right now, man. All these, you know, it's like when you, it's like when you pick up a, a rock and all these ants under the rock, they are running around and shit. You know what I'm saying? This, this is what all these, you, these guys are doing now. You know, people like uh, 78 Sports, uh, BFTB, uh, you know, uh, I mean, all of the clowns, you know, uh, that was out there talking nonsense for years. Okay, all of them now got to face reality. And believe me, they don't like what they're seeing, but you know it is what it is. So, at the end of the day, uh, you know, Terence Crawford uh, did what he was supposed to do. Uh, I, I mean, it wasn't any surprise to me at all uh, what happened. Uh, I more, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, my if you watch my video prior to this video, I predicted that the fight would end in the seventh round, that Crawford would knock him out in the seventh. But you know, it took him a little longer. It took him two rounds. I think he probably just carried Spence for those two rounds just to give him a little more punishment, maybe, I don't know. But uh, I thought he could have ended the fight any time after the fifth round, it looks to me like. Uh, you know, uh, from what I saw, he looked like he could have ended the fight two, at least two rounds before he did end the fight, okay, before the referee stopped it. And I'm, and if truth be told, you know, that fight should have been stopped around the seventh round after the, sec the two knockdowns. I think that was in the seventh round. I'm not, I don't remember exactly. But <clears throat> Excuse me. I was wondering if they were going to stop the fight because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm seeing uh, uh, Errol Spence's father in the, you know, corner, uh, arts, just right outside the corner, looking over at his, uh, his son, and you know, I'm thinking, yeah, they're going to stop this fight. They should stop the fight. They should have stopped the fight. You know, Errol Spence took too much punishment because it was clear by the seventh round that he was, he had no path to victory whatsoever, and that he was just going to get, is going to get worse and worse. Okay. Uh, but you know, they let it go the distance and they let it, they let it go. I mean, I was surprised at that. Actually, I was surprised that, it, uh, Spencer's father let the fight continue, you know, considering the, 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 the uh, the way, uh, Crow I mean, Spence looked in the seventh round and even on the eighth round, I was like, man, when are they, when are they going to stop this fight? They should stop the fight. They need to stop the fight, you know, because I mean, Crawford was just trying to, he, he, I mean, he, he missed a punch. I think it was in the eighth round or ninth. If that punch would have connected, he, he would have knocked Errol Spence flat on his back. But he, he you know, uh, luckily uh, for Errol Spence, he missed that punch. So uh, you know, uh, Errol Spence was basically out of it. You know, uh, he had no chance. Uh, you know, from the second round, we all saw that. And uh, you know, Crawford just applied the pressure and continued, you know, the destruction until. Uh, the referee had to step in. You know, I, I'm really surprised that Derek James didn't throw in the towel. Uh, I was, you know, and I'm surprised that Terence, uh, I mean, Errol Spence father let the fight continue. I, I, I was thinking that maybe he might press Derek James to throw in the towel or something, but not, that didn't happen. They let the fight continue. And so we saw the end result of that. So uh, while the fight was going on, I was kind of impressed by the corner of... Uh, Terence Crawford, you know, Bo Mack was in there giving his fighters good instructions, you know, on point instructions. Derek James was over there telling, uh, uh, you know, he looked like he was shell shocked first of all, and uh, he, he he was basically telling uh, Errol Spence to step around, uh, don't stand in front of Crawford. But that's not a that's not much. I mean, anybody can tell you that. Don't I mean, don't stand in front of Crawford. But if I'm not gonna stand in front of him, what am I gonna do? He said, step around, step around and do what? 
throw the right, throw the left, throw the hook. What? What am I supposed to do after that? And, you know, Terrell, I mean, Errol Spence wasn't in no condition to take instructions anyway because he, he looked confused. Uh, he didn't seem to be in his, you know, you know, he, he was basically, he looked like he couldn't really absorb any uh, instructions really because he was just, you know, in such a bad shape. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I just don't understand how they sent him out there in the seventh, the eighth, the ninth round. You know, the way he looked and the way he seemed to be, he would the punishment he was taking. I mean, why? I mean, what's the point of it? You know, I mean, there's no way he was gonna win. I mean, that was pretty clear. But they kept sending him out there. You know, and you, and you notice every time he, he got knocked down, he jumped right back up. You know, he just jumped up instantly, which you're not supposed to do that. You know, when you when you get knocked down as a fighter, uh, in a, you know you take the count. You know, you take the t you lay, you stay on the ground till the referee count to eight, and then you get up because, you know, you want to get as much time to recover as you can. You don't just jump up right away and then go right back into the fight. No, you take that ten seconds, uh, eight seconds. You take that eight count, gather yourself, and then you get back up. That's how you know that a fighter is in his right mind. You know, he's thinking in the moment. He knows what's going on. When you see a fighter jump right back up right away, you know that he doesn't really know what's going on or he's not really thinking, okay? Uh, he's just reacting. And and this is what we saw with Errol Spence. He was just reacting. He didn't know what to do. He just jumped up both times. Every time he got hit, he just jumped right back up. Didn't take time to get the count. Didn't take time to recover himself. He just jumped back up because he was embarrassed, I guess, by getting knocked down. That was the first time he got knocked down in his career. And he got knocked down three times in the same fight. So, you know, I, I understand that. But, what I can say is that uh, this was a masterpiece of boxing uh, from Terence Crawford. It was total. Uh, it was a total masterpiece. It was great teamwork from his corner, from all his people. And, you know, Crawford went out there and executed to perfection. Okay, I mean, Errol Spence had nothing to say, uh, nothing, no answer, no. You know, he had no way. To, to to defeat Crawford. He didn't he couldn't come up with nothing. He couldn't make any adjustments. You know, if he tried anything, Crawford just shut him down. I mean, Crawford was at his uh defensive best, offensive best. I mean he just he was a total package. Okay? The total package. We saw what we saw last night uh was poetry in motion. We saw we saw Man, I mean, we saw talent, we saw technique, we saw skills. I mean, you know, all this talk about Errol Spence, you know, uh, fundamentals and all of that, and you know, none of that was any didn't him any good last night, because we saw that the fundamentally sound fighter was actually Terence Crawford. He was the, sound, the fundamentally sound fighter. You know, he was a fighter with a total package. He the jab, okay, the hooks, the uppercut. The overhand, okay. I mean, he had every uh, tool in his arsenal, and he used a, a, a. He didn't use all of them, but he used, you know, a few, and that was just enough to do the job. So, finally, uh, you know, uh, the propaganda, all of that nonsense that that people been talking for years. You know, like I said, all the people I mentioned, you know. Blue Blood Sports, Phantom Boxing, Champ Side, uh, BFTB, Boxing Ego, I mean Boxing Ego, uh, you know, all and, and there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, guest characters <laughs> out there beside the main characters. You know, a whole bunch of guest characters, YouTubers out there who was jumping on the Errol Spence bandwagon, you know. And the the aerospace hype train, okay, and uh, you know they all diss Crawford and they were all out there talking about how aerospace, you know, the big fish, he was gonna do this, he was gonna do that, and you know Crawford didn't fought nobody, Crawford didn't, you know, his, all his opponents are trash, you know. I mean, you know, it's not surprising that they were saying all that because all that actually came from Derek James. Derek James is the one that was talking all that nonsense, you know, and, and spreading it out there, and they were just taking it up and running with it, these YouTubers, so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we saw, uh, you know, uh, 
we saw how everything played out. It played out right in front of us. And so, you know, it, we didn't have to hear it from anybody. We saw it with our own eyes. And and now we, 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 now we know, you know, what the truth is. And the truth is that uh, Terrence Crawford is the truth. <laughs> okay? You know, uh, Spence was not the truth. Terrence Crawford is now the truth. And he's always been the truth. Okay? So uh, we all saw that for ourselves. And so, you know, now we hear in terms, you know, Errol Spence talking about a rematch. And I mean, I don't think there's going to be any rematch, really. I think he just said rematch because his pride is hurt and, you know, all of that. And it's in the moment and, you know, in the excitement of it all. And, you know, he's thinking, yeah, I got to get a get back. But once he gets home and, you know, he think about it for a couple of days and then, you know, he has to face the cold, hard light of reality. I think that Errol Spence is going to realize that fighting Crawford again won't prove anything. It's going to be the same result, and I don't think he's going to go for that rematch at all. I don't I don't see a rematch happening. Uh, you know, after, you know, they go home and think about it and talk about it with his team, they're going to realize that, nah, you know, uh, that a rematch is not a, a good idea at all. Uh, I don't see that as being a great idea. And, you know, uh, I mean, I mean, that's his prerogative. If he wants to rematch, he can get it because it's in the contract, but I just don't see it happening, and I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think Eric Spence is going to, you know, want the rematch after he really sits down and think about this fight, okay? But, you know, I could be wrong, so we'll see what happens, you know, if, if, if he actually gets the rematch. But again, uh, you know, I just want to say that congratulations to Terrence Crawford. Uh, congratulations to Eric Spence. He, you know, he, he stayed in there, uh, even though... You know, he was getting beat down brutally by uh, Terrence Crawford. I mean, you know, I, I don't think he's going to be the same after the fight, uh, Errol Spence. I just don't see it. I mean, he got really beat up bad. And they let him, his corner let him stay in there and get beat up, which I just don't understand that. You know, they let him get totally destroyed in there. Uh, you know, but, you know, congratulations, Spence, anyway, because he, you know, he did stay in there. He didn't quit, uh, even though, uh, you know, your fighter don't have to quit, but, uh, but as the corner, you know, the corner can quit, okay? The team can quit, but the fighter don't have to quit. You know, the team could say, well, we, 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 know, we, put, we threw in the towel because, we, you know, he, he didn't want us to throw in the towel, but we threw it in anyway. I mean, that's what your corner is supposed to be doing, you know, looking out for your, your well-being, but it doesn't seem like that at all. I mean, we saw in the post-fight, we saw Derek James talk about how he probably would never recover. Of course, he would rec he's not going to recover from this. You know, he's worried about him recovering and instead of about... Uh, you know, uh, Errol Spence. Will Errol Spence ever recover? That's what you need to worry about, okay? So, uh, you know, I, I tell you, man, uh, all I can tell you is that this guy, Derek James, you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to make it about him, but I mean, you know, uh, he led he led Errol Spence down this road. But then again, I know, uh, maybe not, because I'm thinking that I don't think that he really wanted this fight. Uh, based on everything he has said so far, throughout the years. He never actually wanted to fight with Terrence Crawford, I don't think. He always belittled Crawford, put Crawford down, say, you know, the fight won't sell and all of this. That was all Derrick James. So he never wanted this fight because I, I, I'm pretty sure he knew what would happen. I mean, there's no way if Derrick James is the coach that he claims to be, uh, that people claim that he is, the trainer of the year, there's no way you can tell me that he, saw, he, he ever saw Terrence Crawford fight and didn't know uh, Errol Spence could not beat Terrence Crawford. If he ever saw Terrence Crawford fight, he had to know that. Okay? and But he claimed he don't really watch Terrence Crawford. But Errol Spence watched Terrence Crawford, like he said. And he knew what was he knew what time it was. I mean, I think. But Errol Spence took the fight anyway because I guess, you know, the pressure and, you know, people called him out and the whole nine yards. And you know, the money too, probably. But at the end of the day, you know, he ended up taking the fight. But I think he had an idea that he probably wouldn't win this fight. But he took it anyway, which is... As, you know, you know. One thing we can say about we can say what we want about Errol Spence, but we can't say he's a you know he's a coward or that he's not a man or that he doesn't you know he's not brave. You know, you know. He, I gotta give it to him in that and in that respect. Uh, he took you know his uh, he took everything in his hands and he went out there and did what he could do and he couldn't do much, but he tried. And uh, we gotta give him credit for that. You know, because I'm pretty sure with his with his boxing brain, he knew that Crawford was the truth, and uh, he probably was on the, you know, he was going to be on the losing side, I, I would think, you know, and we all saw the odds and all that was in Crawford's favor, so I'm pretty sure Errol Spence had some idea that he might not be the 
he might not have won this fight, but he, he took the fight anyway. I mean, yeah, a lot of it was because of pressure from people, you know. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, he still had to go in there and, and do the, do what he had to do, and he did it. So we gotta give him credit for that. But yeah, it was a we saw a master class last night with Terence Crawford. We saw we saw a, a man take his rightful place in the annals of boxing history, and uh, you know, at the top, you know, one of the you know the best ever. Uh, to do it, and uh, it was a beautiful thing to watch. I mean, it was like I said, poetry in motion. I mean, Terence Crawford is no joke, man. I mean, this guy. I mean, the defense, the offense, the move, the movement. You know, I broke it down in my previous video. Like I said, it was gonna come down to two things: hand feet, hand speed, and foot speed. And that's exactly what it was all about: hand speed and foot speed. You know, uh. Spencer, like he was fighting in slow motion. And Terrence Crawford was just picking him, his, his shots off, blocking the shots, slipping shots, and just punishing him the whole time. And so, you know, it was a, it was a masterpiece. It was a, a masterful uh, performance and execution at the highest level. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad I was able to see it live, okay? Uh, it was a great performance by Terrence Crawford. And like I said, uh, I just want to congratulate Terrence Crawford. He did a great job in there, King. Uh, keep up the good work. Uh, I don't see anybody beating Terrence Crawford. They t people now, they're talking about, you know, Booth Innes. And, oh, man, poor Booth Innes. You put Booth Innes in there with Crawford, and it's a total destruction. It, it's going to be, it's gonna, it probably will be even worse. Uh, I just don't see Booth being ready for Crawford yet at this point. And he needs more experience. I mean, and he had a lot of fights, almost as much fights as Crawford, but he hasn't fought anybody. You know, so I'm looking for Crawford now to move up and take, you know, go for the three-time uh, undisputed. And, you know, uh, because, you know, uh, Jamel is getting ready to fight Canelo. I mean, I mean, I would love to see Crawford fight Canelo at middleweight or something like that. I mean, that probably would never happen, but that would be a great, uh, that would be a great fight. You know what I mean? You know, so, uh, we, you know, I guess we got to wait and see where Crawford is going to go from here. But he got a lot of options in front of him right now. He's the face of boxing right now. And so uh, his options are wide open. You know, wide open. He can do whatever he wants right now. And, uh, you know, he deserves every second, every minute and you know, of, of what he's experiencing right now. Again, you know, congratulations uh, uh, to him. Wish him the best. Hopefully uh, Spence will recover. And, you know, if he decides that he wants to fight Crawford again, then, you know, I guess he, you know, he has a right to go for it. But I just don't see anything, you know, <coughs> that's going to be different in the next fight if they fight again. I mean, it, it sounded like uh, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. I just don't see it. it, it if anything, it's probably be worse next time. So I don't really see anything different happening. So I, I, I just don't see that fight. I don't think the fight will ever happen. I don't think there will ever be a rematch. You know, that's just my opinion. But again, I could be wrong. And maybe, you know, Terrence. Maybe Spence, you know, want to go for it again. I mean, it's going to be a, a lot of money for both of them. So I guess, you know, why not go for it? But, you know, in terms of the outcome, it, it won't be anything different, I, I don't think. So, But, you know, we'll see how everything plays out. But with that said, I'm going to go live and we're going to talk about this some uh, more. But for right now, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, total destruction, uh, post-fight analysis. Crawford is now two-time undisputed. and uh, Errol Spence has been sent to the shadow realm. But at the end of the day, it was a great fight. Congratulations to both guys. I'm glad that hopefully Errol Spence didn't get hurt too bad. But I don't, I don't know. He looks pretty bad. But we'll, you know, we'll see how everything plays out in the end. Uh, hopefully he can recover and come back again. Uh, although I don't know, you know, after a beating like that, I don't see, you know, how he's going to uh, recover fully. Uh, but we'll see, you know. So... Uh, we'll see how it all plays out, uh, you know, again. Uh, with that said, I'm going to leave it there. This is TBE Boxing saying I'm out. Still love you for riches, huh? Pretty rich, show me titties, huh? And I got the glazy, run up on me, I'ma make you get it. I'ma make you get it.